Welcome to Process to Profitability, a podcast all about the tools and strategies you need to serve your clients and grow your small business, hosted by me, Samantha Mabe of Lemon and the Sea. Join me as I chat with creative entrepreneurs and small business owners about how they built and grew their businesses and how you can do the same in a way that fits you. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 84 of Process to Profitability. Today's episode is all about how you can know if a website template is the right choice for your business and how to choose the right one. It may seem strange coming from a website designer, but I believe that website templates are a valuable resource for many businesses, especially when you're starting out. Custom website design is a big investment of both time and money, so starting with the right template can help you move forward in your business until you're ready to take that step. I'm going to be sharing when a template might be right for your business and my tips on choosing the right template for you. Let's start by talking about how you know if you should use a website template or work with a designer for a custom design. Here's my advice. If you are just starting out in your business, even if you're a year or two in, but you feel like you're really not in the swing of things, you don't know who your dream client is, you don't feel like you have your process down, a template is a great choice for you. Now, I get it. You've probably seen some really gorgeous custom websites and you want to be there right now. You think that having that design is going to help bring in new clients and customers and help you make more money. But here's the thing. If you jump in to buying a custom design for your website before you actually need one, it's not going to serve your business as well. When I talk to clients about website design, I want to know that they know who their dream clients are, they've worked with them before, they've got a process down so they can get into the strategy of website design instead of just trying to make something look pretty. A lot of these people are in their third or fourth or fifth year in business. They've been serving their clients really well, they have been building up their business and they need a website that's going to help them communicate all of that and they don't have time to do it themselves. That's a big part of hiring a designer is they are an expert in something that you are not. And so when you are so busy with client work that you need to outsource something and you want a new website, that's a great time to do a custom design. If you're still in the beginning stages of your business and you want a website that looks great and has a design flair to it, but you really are not ready to make the investment, maybe you've only worked with a couple of clients or you're not quite sure what you want to narrow in on, a template is a great option. You can find templates that are created by amazing designers that still have everything that you need without the price tag of time and money to work with somebody one-on-one. If you're thinking that you're still trying to decide between using a website template or working with a custom design, here are some questions you can ask. First, do I know what I want my website to accomplish? Not just I want it to bring in more clients, but do you have some solid goals and the way that you're working towards those goals? You can also ask whether or not you have the money to invest in a designer. If you don't have that together yet, that's okay. Maybe look at buying a higher end template and saving up for a designer later. You also want to evaluate your current website. Is it working for what you need it to do? Is it bringing in the types of clients that you want? Or do you feel like it's really not showing off your work to the best of its capability? That's a really important time to consider doing a website redesign, whether with a new template or with a designer, because having a website that highlights your work and makes it look as great as it is, is the way that you're going to attract the clients that you want to work with. You also want to think about whether a template and a website design is something you want to tackle yourself. For some people, they just don't want to deal with websites themselves. And so hiring somebody to help them get something up and running is the best option because they don't care about looking at the back end of a website. They just want it up and running and working for them. My real guideline here is to just look at your business, where it is. When I first started out, I chose a template and I started using it and I found that it just wasn't working for my business. It didn't have everything that I needed for it to function and so I switched over 
to Squarespace and I chose a basic template from there. And when I chose the Squarespace template that I used, I did the bare minimum. There wasn't very much custom design. I was adding in images in my copy, but I wasn't making it stand out from the rest. And that was okay for a while because it was bringing in the clients that I needed. It was cost effective for me and it helped me really have time to figure out what it was that I wanted to communicate people and how I wanted to be seen in the world. It gave me a place for my blog and to have an email newsletter sign up, all the functionality that I needed without a big price tag of time or money as a designer myself to get everything together. And I really encourage new businesses to do the same. When I used to design logos, I got asked a lot by friends and families who were considering starting a business, whether I would design their logo and how much it would cost. And what I would usually tell them is, this is what your investment would be. But what I recommend while you're just starting out is to go and find a logo that's pre-done that you can take and use as your own for a while until you make sure that your business is going to last. You don't want to invest a ton of money into a business if you're just starting out and you're not sure that it's even something you want to pursue in the long term. For a lot of new business owners, it's not that we can't find clients or we don't earn the money that we want, although those can be problems, but sometimes you jump into something thinking that you're going to love it and then you find out that you really don't. That's how my first business started. I was going to build a blog based on DIY projects and recipes, and I found out really quickly that that was not my strength, and it was not something that I could keep up with for years to come. And so I'm really, really glad that I didn't invest a lot into a website design and a logo that was all custom made from scratch. Instead, I had a template that when I decided it wasn't going to work, I wasn't out that much money or time from setting it up. And that's what I think is a great thing to consider for you. When you are just starting out, when you are trying out a new concept, think about using a template. Once you have been established in business, you know your dream clients, you know what you're offering, you've got all of this stuff and you just want a professional looking website that nobody else is going to have. You want it to stand out from the rest so that you can be known as the go-to person. That's when you can invest in a custom design. So for a lot of people, a template is the right choice to start out with. It gives you a platform to work with, a website that's going to look good and speak to your dream clients without all of the work and investment and time that comes with a custom design. Part of what it takes to run a successful online business is having the right tools for the job. I'm sharing a list of all of the tools I use in my business in my toolbox. And you can find that at lemonandthesea.com slash my dash toolbox to download it now. These include tools that I use for podcasting, designing, running my business, and other things. So you can get a real inside look at everything that I use every day in order to serve my clients well and grow my business. Again, you can find that at lemonandthesea.com slash my dash toolbox. So how do you choose the right template? Maybe you decided to DIY your website for the first time or when you were ready for a change, you purchased a template, started adding your content, and then you stopped short. Your template that you spent hours customizing doesn't have some of the features you need, or it just doesn't feel like your business. You're not alone. Like I said, when I first purchased my first website template, I had no idea what I was doing. So I just picked the prettiest one that I could find. I was on WordPress. I didn't know what it needed to have, but I chose one because I thought it looked nice. And it wasn't long before I outgrew it. Just a couple of months. That's okay. It happens to the best of us. So when choosing a website, how do you get it right the first time? And Know that you have chosen something that can grow with you until you are ready to invest in something else. The first thing that I really encourage you to think about is the same thing I encourage my custom design clients to think about. What is the main goal of your website? Are you trying to sell a product? 
Are you getting people to sign up for your email list so that you can nurture them and teach them about your service? Are you sharing content because you're a podcast host and you want to make sure that people are finding what it is that you have to say? I always start with the main goal of the website because the design is going to look different based on what it is that you need. Do you need something to sell an online product or guides? Then you need something that has e-commerce. And we're going to talk about features in just a minute. But the type of template you choose is going to be based on what goals you have because that is going to be what determines the types of pages that you need and how you need it to function. So if you are trying to educate people and share content, then you need a blog. If you're trying to demonstrate your work as a photographer or an event planner, you need the ability to have a portfolio. And different templates are going to set these up different ways, and some of them won't even include these pages. Depending on the template you choose, you want to look through every page that they offer and see if it's going to meet your needs. Is it going to give you those pages that you need for your website based on what it is that you do and who you serve? And is it going to give you the functionality that you need as far as meeting that big goal of yours? If your goal is to get people to sign up for your email list, you don't want to choose a template that doesn't allow you to have email list signups. The second thing to ask is what features you need. So I mentioned before e-commerce, that's a really big one when you're looking at templates, but do you need to be able to sell things online? Are you going to be writing blog posts or hosting a podcast? Do you want to share your images in a gallery? If you know what features are must-haves, then you can narrow your down your list of template options by which ones have those and which ones don't. I recommend making a list of the features your website will need and then start weeding out templates that don't include those features or make it difficult to incorporate them. So some things you may want to consider are e-commerce, blog, gallery, a sidebar for your blog, banner images. These are really important if you work in a visual field. A footer and a pre-footer. Do you want these to be separate sections or the same section? Do you want your website to be mobile friendly? A hint here, yes you do. Do you need blog archives? A search capability, a navigation bar, scrolling or parallax capability, and do you want to have full page images? All of these things are different functionalities and some templates are going to have all of these. Everyone should have a navigation bar, but you also want to look at the things that are not included. So every blog and te website template might not have a search capability. And how difficult is it to add it? If it doesn't have it already, there might be things you can add pretty easily, but for some things, it's a lot more difficult. And the goal of having a website template is to make it easier on yourself so that you're not spending hundreds of hours updating your website. Instead, you want to take advantage of that template design Make sure that it already has the functionality that you need so you can get your website live really quickly. The next thing to consider goes along with functionality, but what platform are you using? Template options you're going to have will be limited by website platforms. So if you're using Squarespace, you're limited to their pre-designed templates or templates from a couple of shops. For WordPress, anyone can design a template, so you have a really wide variety to choose from, and what you need to do there is figure out if it's going to work properly. For other website platforms like Wix or Weebly, you might have different template options. If you're using Showit, there are lots of designs out there targeted to photographers, but maybe not to your business specifically. Whatever platform you choose, you wanna make sure your template is compatible with it and that it's easy to install and it's going to work well. So one of the reasons I mentioned this is because I have had clients who are on Squarespace and they love the platform just as much as I do, but they choose a template that it really doesn't install the way they expect it to. And part of the reason is Squarespace makes it really difficult for other people to design templates and just install them. Usually what you're doing is following instructions on how to copy the design onto your own website, but you're still doing the work. And that's fine if you have the time and you understand that that's what you're doing, but just be aware of how a template works, how it needs to be installed, what you need access to, 
so that as you are looking for that, you know what you're getting into. And of course, when you choose a platform, you wanna make sure that you have the functionality that you need. So for show it websites specifically, I tell clients that it is harder to integrate e-commerce with show it. On Squarespace, it's a built-in tool for pretty much all templates, although some have more options than others. But for show it, you have to install some other plugins, connect to different things, and it's a lot more difficult. That's okay if that's what you want to do, but it's just something you need to be aware of like anything else. So make sure that the platform that you're choosing can also support the functionality that you need. And when you're choosing your template, make sure that it is supported on the platform that you've used. As you're choosing a website template, another thing to consider is, is it going to grow with you? While you are probably going to be investing in a custom website design as your business grows, or at least getting some help from a designer to customize the template you're using, you want to make sure that you've got some room to grow. The problem with the first template that I chose was that it was just a blog. It didn't have a space for a homepage, an about page, services, portfolio, any of that. And so I really quickly outgrew it when I decided that I was going to be offering design services. It didn't have everything that I offered. So what I would suggest when you are thinking about your business, think about where you want to be in five years. Do you need to have a digital store to get to that place or a resource library? It might seem silly to choose a website platform based on where you want your business to be years down the road, but it's much easier to grow if your website template has the capability to grow with you. Consider your big goals and what you have on your website in order to get there. These things aren't must-haves, but they should be nice-to-haves that can help you make your final decision as you decide between one template and the next. And of course, some things are not going to be easy to do without having a custom design. So creating a wholesale login area might need a little bit more work than just choosing a website template. But as long as you are aware of where you're trying to go in the next five years, you can make sure that your website can grow with you at least long enough to keep you going, to serve your clients, and to build your business enough to invest in the next step. So you've considered all of these things, you've chosen a platform, made a list of the features that you need, you know the goal of your website, so it's time to choose your template. Always start by doing a broad search for templates that work with your platform and then narrow that list down based on your goals and must-have features. When you found a few options that you like, try out their demos and visit other websites using the template to see how it works. On Squarespace, if you choose a Squarespace-specific template that they have created, they will let you try out their website and show you examples of other people's websites that use that platform that you can check out to see really how far you can push it and what you can do with that template. Consider if it fits your brand style, the customization features that are available, and the overall user experience. A word here about customization. Even if you can't customize your website template yourself, don't limit your future growth by choosing a template that has limited or no customizable features. Down the road, you might choose to hire a designer or developer, and if they can't work with your current template, you might have to start over. So on Squarespace, you might not be able to customize your template to do everything that you want it to down the road, but you know the designer can get in there and do some custom code and add some things so that you get the look that you want. I also suggest really making sure that your template fits your brand and your dream client. So take a look at the types of designs that are available, the styles. Do you want clean and bright with a lot of white space or do you need something that is more refined and elegant? Whatever it is that you're looking for, just consider that in your template. You don't want it to be something that you think is pretty but that doesn't fit your brand. And with so many choices out there, you've got some options to look at. You also want to consider how popular the templates you're looking at are for other people in your industry. So you might have overlap with somebody else where they're using the same template or your websites look very similar, but if it seems like everybody is using the same template that everything looks exactly the same, consider going with something else so that you can stand out. 
If, like me, you find that you've gone through the entire process, but you still end up with a template that isn't right, that's okay. We've all been there. Depending on your platform, you may be able to switch templates without buying something new, like Squarespace allows you to, or you might be able to find some workarounds by searching online. If you've tried that and you still can't make your template work, you may need to start the process over, which is not fun, but now you know that you needed a certain feature or functionality that you didn't think about before, so you can make sure that you're getting it right the second time. And don't hesitate to ask experts for help, additional help. Facebook groups can be a great place to get advice or find templates, or you might be able to hire somebody to design some customizations to your template if your budget allows it to really take what you've purchased to the next level without the investment of a full custom website design. I know that's a lot of things to think about, so I recommend listening to this episode when you are sitting in front of a computer or somewhere you can take notes if you are considering using a website template to make a list of the things that pop into your head that you're going to need as you do your search. Your action steps for today are number one, make a list of the three biggest goals you have for your website. Of course, you've heard me say this before, the website goals that you have are going to determine so much about your design and your strategy, so they're very important. Number two, research website platforms and choose the one that works best for your business now and as you grow. I really like Squarespace and Show It, but there are other platforms out there that might work better for you, and it's good to research them ahead of time so you can make an informed decision. And number three, create a Pinterest board with website designs that fit your brand. This is a fun task because then you can refer back to it as you're choosing templates to get an idea of what you want your website to look and feel like. And sometimes those pins that you use are actually website templates that you can go and check out. I hope this episode was helpful. I know that it seems a little bit strange coming from a website designer who works with custom designs to talk about choosing a website template, but I think it's a really important part of business depending on the stage that you're in. And I don't want to discourage anybody from starting the business that they have been dreaming of and serving their clients by telling them they have to wait until they can make a big investment in a custom design. Templates are a perfectly fine way to start. Just make sure that you're choosing something that's going to work with you and that's going to serve your clients. Thanks for listening to Process to Profitability. Please take a minute to leave an honest review in iTunes so that I can help more small business owners and creative entrepreneurs find the show. 